This is part 7 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using our own custom stored procedures to perform insert, update and delete operations using Entity Framework. Let's now look at the steps involved. We'll be using this employees table for this demo. Here is the SQL script to create and populate it with some sample data. I've already executed this script, so if you notice the sample database, we already have employees table there. The next step is to create the insert, update and delete stored procedures. Here is the SQL script that can do it. Again, I have already executed the script. So if you notice stored procedures folder here under sample database, we already have those three stored procedures, insert employee, update employee and delete employee. I'll have this entire SQL script available on my blog in case you need it. Right. The next step is to create a new ASP.NET Web Application project. I've done that as well already. So here we have a new empty ASP.NET Web Application project. So to this project, let's go ahead and add an ADO.NET Entity Data Model. And let's call this Employee Model. We want to generate the model from the database. So select that option and click Next and give the connection string a meaningful name. I'm going to call this employee DB context and then click next. So now entity framework is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views and stored procedures. So we have there our employees table and let's select the three stored procedures, insert, update and delete employees. And let's give the model namespace a meaningful name. Let's call this employee model and click finish. So this should generate the ADO.NET Entity Data Model for us. And if you look at this ADO.NET Entity Data Model designer surface, we can only see the entity, but we can't see the stored procedures. To view the stored procedures, right click on the designer surface and then select model browser. So within model browser, we should be able to see the stored procedures. So notice that under employee model store, we have got tables slash views. We expand that, we find our employees table there. And once we expand that, we should be able to see the columns belonging to that table. Similarly, if we expand the stored procedures folder, notice that we've got the three stored procedures. And if I expand delete employee, for example, it shows us the parameters that this stored procedure expects. Similarly, insert employee and update employee. All right, so now let's go ahead and add a web form to our project. And let's set the style attribute here. Let's set style font family to area. And let's actually flip this to the design mode. And we want a grid view control we need a details view control and an entity data source control. First, let's configure the entity data source control. So click on this configure data source link and select employee DB context. Um, at the moment, we have that error. That's basically because we did not build the solution after we have generated the ADO.NET entity data model. So let's build the solution. And then let's now configure the data source. So let's select employee DB context, click next, and our entity set is going to be employees. And make sure you have selected these three checkboxes, enable automatic inserts, updates, and deletes. Click finish. Okay, now let's associate this entity data source with this grid view control. But before we do that, let's actually auto format this so that it looks a little nice. And now let's choose SQL, uh, Entity Data Source 1 as the data source for the grid view control. And we also want to enable editing and deleting on the grid view control. And the reason why we are using details view control here is to basically to allow inserting an employer record into the database. So we're going to do that using the details view control. Okay, so grid view is going to help us editing and deleting. This details view is going to help us with the insert op um, operation. So let's auto format the details view also to use colorful scheme. And let's also choose the data source as entity data source one for the details view control. And we want to enable inserting. So let's select that checkbox. Now we only want to use this details view for inserting a row. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the properties 
of this details view control and there's something called a default mode and the default mode um, by default it's read only so let's change that to insert and notice that at the moment this details view uh, you know is allowing an ID to be entered but if you look at the employees table um, you know DDL here this ID column is an identity column meaning we don't have to supply a value for that when we are inserting an employee record so it doesn't make sense to actually um, you know allow the ID value to be entered here. So we want that to be uh, invisible in edit mode and to make that invisible flip into the source mode into the HTML source mode and this is the bound field within the details view. So this has got an attribute called insert visible. Let's set that to false. So Let's flip this to the design mode and notice that um, the ID column is gone. Okay. So with all these changes, let's go ahead and run our web application project. So we should be able to insert, update, and delete data. Okay, now let's actually flip to SQL Server Management Studio. Let's select the rows that are already there. So at the moment, we have got seven rows, and that's what is displayed on the web form. Now let's also fire up SQL Profiler. So click on tool SQL profiler so basically SQL profiler help us um, you know identify what queries are being executed against SQL server so I'm going to run the profiler alright now let's go ahead and edit an employee so let's say we want to change Mark's name from Mark to Mark M now let's click update and let's go back to SQL profiler and if you notice look at this here is the update statement let's actually pause the SQL profiler so if you look at this update statement right here look at this the entity framework has generated a SQL statement a parameterized SQL statement it's not making use of the custom stored procedures that we have written um, okay so by default entity framework is going to use the auto generated SQL statements okay if we want to tell the entity framework to use um, uh, the stored procedures we have to map them to the employee entity we'll do that in just a bit the same will be the case when we insert a new row let's say we want to insert an employee called Josh male and let's say his salary is 56,000 and once we insert that uh, at the moment we have a problem look at this when we insert you know the data the row gets inserted so if we execute this, look at that, Josh record is inserted here, but then it's not displayed within the grid view control. That's basically because we need to um, rebind the data to the grid view control. And the easiest way to do that is obviously as soon as we insert a row using this details view control, that's when we want to refresh this grid view control. So I'm going to go to the properties of the grid uh, details view. And then if we navigate to the events uh, tab there, um, as soon as item is inserted so let's generate the event handler for uh, item inserted event and all we are going to do here is invoke the data bind method of the grid view control so let's run it once more and then let's actually insert another row let's call you know let's add an employee called Stacy uh, female and let's say her salary is 60,000 let's insert that and notice that it gets refreshed and if you look at uh, we actually pause SQL Server I mean SQL profiler let's actually erase everything that we have here and let's start the profiler once again let's insert one more row just to let's say test mail and let's say 34,000 let's insert that now if we go back to the profiler let's pause it and if you look at this again look at that it's using the um, dynamically generated SQL that is the parameterized query it's not using our stored procedures let's see how to map our custom stored procedures uh, you know to employee entity it's very simple to do all we need to do is go on to the ADO.NET entity model designer surface right click on the entity and then you have an option there to map stored procedures so select that and then here look at this you have the option to select your insert function update function and delete function notice that it doesn't say stored procedures here uh, basically because in dotnet terms you know a stored procedure is essentially like a function 
right? So once it is brought into .NET, ADO.NET entity data model, we, we call them as functions. So select your insert function. That's going to be insert employee. So once we select that, notice that here we have the parameters for insert employee stored procedures. And here we have the properties. So name property of the employee entity should be mapped with name parameter of the insert employee stored procedure. OK, uh, the same is the case for gender and salary. Let's select the update function. In this case, update employee. And again, notice that the mapping is done for us automatically. And finally, we need to do the mapping for delete. So let's select delete employee. Uh, delete stored procedure has got only one parameter. That's ID. All right, so with this change, let's go ahead and run our web application project. Let's clear out everything that we have. Let's say we have, for example, um, test three, mail 20,000. And before we click insert, let's actually start the profiler and click insert. And if we go back to the profiler, we should have, look at that, a call to insert employee is, is made. So insert employee, look at that, the values for the parameters are passed, name, gender, and salary. On the other hand, for example, if you update an employee, let's say we are changing John to John 1, male to female, and maybe 80,000 to maybe 90,000. And let's actually erase everything, run the profiler, and click Update. Now, look at that, update employee. So we have, again, as you can see there, um, you know, the parameter value. So now Entity Framework is using our custom stored procedures. So it's that simple, you know, mapping stored procedures with Entity Framework. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.